What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 89 of On Shape. Got a fresh cup of coffee here. And we are going to looking into making a puzzle cube. Now, a puzzle cube is a pretty standard assignment when you're looking at assemblies and some part files and how to create some simple geometry, but then also do an assembly with it. And so overall, you have these 27 cubes, so it's a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube uh, that will make up a larger cube structure. Um, and in my puzzle cube, we have five different parts. We've got a purple, green, blue, yellow, red, and then a purple, green, you, and then, did I miss one? Purple, green, blue, yellow, red. Nope, that's it. That's all five of them. Sweet. We are going to build this, then we're going to do an exploded view showing how those pieces interact, and then throw those in our drawing file with the build materials and some callouts. Now this actually doesn't take too long to make, but it does use some features rather quickly. And so that's why I tend to like this assignment is because it showcases some higher level stuff that you may not get into uh, early on in some curriculum. So let's go ahead and let's create a new part studio. And in this part studio, we're actually going to create only one cube. If you are doing different types of cubes, your geometry is going to look a little bit different. But overall, we're just going to pick a view, doesn't really matter too much, and we're going to draw a rectangle. So hit R for rectangle. And then I usually click on my origin point. We're going to hit D for dimension. So we're going to dimension these sides to be 1.25 by 1.25 inches. And we can see we have a fully dimensioned sketch here because all of our geometry is black, meaning nothing of this is assumed. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. Looks great. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. Hit Shift E for extrude. Click on that profile we just finished and also make it 1.25 inches or one and a quarter inch in depth. Now to help us prevent now to see our cubes a little bit easier, I'm actually going to put a small fillet on each of these faces. So I'm going to click on fillet. And then rather than just clicking on the edges, we're just going to click on the face because we want all four edges of each square to be filleted. And then we're getting a radius of 0 0.05 inches. There we go. We've made the first cube. Now, some students or even people would then take this and do it 26 more times. And that is a lot of work, but there's actually a shortcut. So let's use that shortcut. We're going to use linear pattern. And linear pattern will take a body, an entity, and then allow you to repeat that entity. So I'm going to click on part pattern because we're going to repeat this part right here. And then where the direction is going to be, I'm going to choose one of the lines of my fillets. That's going to be a three instance count and 1.25 inches in distance. So we want each instance to be 1.25 inches apart and notice my cubes start to stack. I'm going to go ahead and flip that direction just because I want those going backwards. Let's do a second direction and that direction is going to be going to the left. So I'm going to choose a different line up front and then that distance can be 1.25 again with three instances. Now, unfortunately, there's not a third direction we can do with linear patterns. We just have to be done here, and then we're looking good to go. Next thing is going to do linear pattern again. We're going to choose all of these pieces we have right here. And then the direction is then going to be is upwards. So I'm going to flip that direction. In distance would be 1.25 for three instances. And boom. We have made our cube. The problem about this is that there are no ways to us to do certain assemblies. Um, you could do composite parts. However, since we want these to be one piece, we're going to use a different system than using composite parts, which you might see some other people do. I'm going to use Boolean because this is a fun operation. It's a fun name. I just think it is too fun to not use. So what we're going to do with Boolean is we're going to then recreate our block pieces that we want to make. 
So I'm gonna go down and do this little stair step pattern on the right hand side and make this W shape with my blocks. It's gonna be a union. We don't wanna keep the tools. We don't wanna keep the blocks as individual parts. I'm gonna hit the check mark. Now what that'll do for me is it actually turned all of these cubes to be one part. So we can actually go ahead and rename this. I'm just gonna name this purple. Purple block. And then we're gonna assign it an appearance. Let's give it a purple color. To make sure it's not in my way, I'm gonna go ahead and make this inactive. And we're gonna do the Boolean operation again. I'm gonna click, click some other pieces. I'm gonna do this T shape here. Hit the green check mark. Find out what part that turned into. So if I click on it once, you have to click on this top face. We then now see that's part 19. So I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna call this T, or right, let's call it, let's do red block. Let's do right click, edit appearance, give it a red color, and then go ahead and make it inactive. Continuing on with what we're doing, we're gonna do Boolean operation three time, three more times in total. I'm gonna choose these couple of pieces. Uh, let's make it a little interesting. Let's do that block right there. And that turned into part 12. So we see down the bottom left hand side, we can see part 12. We'll rename this, let's make this yellow. and edit that appearance to have a yellow color. Looks cool. Do we see some three dimensionality? I went and snagged that piece in the middle. And then just to do some interesting, let's get these four pieces along with those two right there. Click the green check mark, find out what part that turned into. Rename this, let's do this as green block. Right click, edit appearance, make it green. And then we have our last, but surely not our least piece. Boolean one more time for all of those parts. And we're gonna rename that part to be, let's do blue. So now we've got all of our blocks again. and we just created our puzzle cube, which consists of 27 individual blocks, but those blocks comprise subcomponents. And since they're all static parts, we could just use the Boolean operation to pull them together. The next thing we need to do is to create our exploded view. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign. We're gonna create a new assembly, and we're gonna pull in all of those parts from this file, so Part Studio 2. Looks good, hit the green check mark. And now these parts can move independently of each other. We don't want that to happen. So we wanna pull all those pieces in as they are. You could go ahead and do some fasten mates, but I don't make this video too long. Instead, we are going to um, keep them as they are. Okay, there we go. Add exploded view. And then we are able to then, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit move our pieces accordingly to where the exploded view makes some sense. We don't wanna pull parts through each other, so we wanna make sure where the, our exploded view is physically possible. So for example, I don't wanna pull this blue piece through the green and the yellow, so it makes more sense for that to go backwards. And there we go, we have our exploded view. Looks well, good. I'm gonna hit the done up at the top. And then now we have our exploded view right there. Awesome. Let's keep on going where we're at. And let's go ahead and go to build, build of materials. And I'm going to clean up my build of materials to display the information I want it to display. I don't need part number, so I'm gonna right click or description, right click and remove those two. I do want to, however, add a column, and that column is going to be its part name. So we have our item, quantity, and part name. Looks great. 
we are ready for our drawing file. So I'm gonna click on the little plus icon. We're gonna create a drawing. Do our title block if you already have one. And then pull it in. I do have a second part studio, so I'm gonna pull in not from here, because we don't want to do just these individuals. I want to do as an assembly from my second assembly. And this is where my, my exploded view is gonna come in. Notice how when I do bring it in, it is of our front view of our assembly. We don't want that. Instead, I'm gonna do insert, and it's going to be of our front view here. And notice how this is our front view of our assembly. We don't want that. Instead, we're gonna do an isometric and explode one. That is our first exploded position. And then able to put it in as we need to. If we wanna go back and adjust our exploded view, we can. I'm gonna hit right click and show shaded view. So we got our parts there as well. Since we did adjust to build materials, we're able to choose those correctly. So I'm gonna choose insert assembly two, and this build materials should be showing the edited information we put in earlier. If you go back and you try to do a different build materials, it may not have this edited information to begin with. So make sure you are using the correct one from our drawing or from our assembly. Last thing is going to be is to put in some call outs. I'm going to click on the call out button. Click on what I want to call out. There's my red piece. There's my yellow. There's my green. There's my purple. And here is my blue. Alrighty. Fantastic, folks. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. Throw them down in the comment section. I love to help out where I can, when I can, with what I can. In the meantime, you guys stay awesome. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.